All right, everybody, welcome, 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 welcome. Let's do this. We've got the uh, we're gonna we're gonna react together to what we saw, the Razorback football red white scrimmage. All right, let's go. Three, two, one. Yo, I don't know why we got we got to change that. It can't be basketball. It's got to be football. That ain't it either. There we go. We got the football background. All right, welcome everybody. Uh, again, make sure you like, share. If you're new here, you know, hit the subscribe button. Whoo! Okay, lot. We we got a couple things. Obviously, we're we're gonna react to the to the scrimmage, what we witnessed, and then uh, yeah, we got a portal update as well from from Coach Sam Pittman. So, so if you guys have any questions or comments, please feel free to fire away. Uh, I'll do my best to answer what I can. I know football right now. It's it's bizarre because it is it is on a downward spin, at least in terms of like the excitement. I think I think you guys would agree with that. The excitement is not, you know, if you're not if you're not talking basketball or if you're not covering nonstop, it's just it's tough to just kind of dive into it uh, because there's just not a ton of excitement around football. But I do think what we saw today. You know, again, you can't take you can't take a lot from spring a spring scrimmage, especially when you got ones versus twos. But there were some things that did stand out, some stuff that we hadn't really seen even in camp and practice. And you guys know I didn't miss a single one. Patreon supporters know that because I every single one of them I gave them a uh, a raw reaction to it. You know, to each and every every uh, scrimmage. Uh, so yeah, make sure you guys, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to fire away. Uh, again, I appreciate you guys for being here. Um, I'm fighting that nasty algorithm monster. It's kicking my ass. I would really appreciate it if you guys would, uh, share the content. It, it really helps the channel out quite a bit. I am, I am, uh, exhausted. I'm not gonna lie to you. I am really tired. I had a crazy, really, it's been kind of a crazy week, but the last 24 hours has been nuts. So, yeah, before we get into everything, I want to say a special shout-out to, of course, Direct Service Overhead, the Garage Door Company. They operate out of Central Arkansas, Northwest Arkansas. Um, Same-day services, quality parts, affordable outcomes. They can, they'll, they'll hook you up, man. Travis and the boys, they got you. So give them a call today at 501-244-3667. Hundreds of five star reviews, free estimates too. So yeah, DC says juggle them balls. Oh, with a twenty dollars super chat, damn! Right out the gate, DC, my man, juggle, juggle them balls. The guy was twenty six years old. That's what we're up against. He's 26 years old. Just put T-Swift in every little act, like every oh every title, and act like people are crazy when they wonder why you're not talking about her, says Stephen1383. <laughs> I appreciate that super chat. Wow. Right out the gate. Cameron Gray, did uh, Pittman take a shot at KJ with the, we have wideouts that have length and a quarterback. They can they can get it to them. No, I don't think so. I, I think his relationship with KJ, as far as I know, is a good one. I did see KJ's numbers. And I, I think there's a little bit of an overreaction to what KJ did at UCF today. And someone posted some bullshit that was not true about his, his stats, saying that he only threw for like 150 yards or whatever. Turns out, off 12 completions, he threw for almost 300 yards. He did throw a couple picks. I don't know what to expect out of him down there. I have not watched anything uh, regarding UCF. I just, I get fans a little bit, you know, being a little bit frustrated with how things ended up with him. You know, a lot of people want to put everything on KJ, which is just, I just don't think you watched a lot of football last year if you think that was all on KJ. Um, but I think there's there, it even gets to a point where people get petty and they just take all these ridiculous shots at KJ. And I'm like, dude, he left it all on the field most of the time he was here. I do agree that last year is he does deserve blame. He deserves some criticism. Absolutely. Nobody's above it. 
But uh, that goes for the coaching staff as well, and obviously the offensive line. I saw Mike Irwin today that, you know, he seemed to me like he was putting – maybe I'm wrong. Mike Irwin, it seemed like he was putting a lot on KJ, if you saw his tweet from earlier. And I'm not saying he's wrong. Mike Mike's always got, you know – He's 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 been doing what he's been doing for a long time, and he's covered the Razorbacks as long as I've been alive. So you know, and and he's got some good takes. I don't always agree with him. You know, I, I don't know that I fully agree with his tweet today. KJ does not deserve, uh, and maybe Mike wasn't saying that. I think Mike was saying that KJ regressed last year, and it was fairly obvious. And a lot of what happened, especially uh, after the uh, Mississippi or after the Florida game and the Mississippi State game, that. Uh, certainly seemed like KJ didn't do his best, didn't put his best foot forward. And I agree with that. I think there was certainly something there uh, on KJ. And uh, you know what? It is what it is. But he also put a lot, you know, he, you also have, if you're going to give him all the blame for last year, then you got to give him a lot of success for the two previous years and not just the year he had Burks. Because if you look at his numbers, the year after Burks, they're nearly identical. I thought he did good with Kendall Bryles system. He's a system quarterback. We'll see what he does. Who, who cares? He's gone. He's gone. Who cares? Huh? Juggling balls. That's what we're doing here. Ty, you the man. I appreciate you, Josh. Yeah, so the last 24 hours has been crazy. I hung out with the Woo Pig Pod fellas at the uh, at, wa- at walk-ons. I've never actually been there. I've never been to walk-ons. And there's one in Rogers also. It was a blast, man. Uh, Armstrong made an appearance. Metcalf brothers made an appearance. Metcalf's parents. I got to meet him. Uh, I talked to I talked to the dad and the DMs every once in a while. He's a good guy, good family. Uh, I saw. I think it was Tevin. Was it Tevin that got a little banged up today? I hope he's doing all right. I'm sure uh, his dad, or maybe I'll reach out to his dad here in a little bit. Make sure he's okay. Uh, good couple of kids. I'm excited for them. I thought uh, I thought they both had pretty strong camps. And we'll see what they do moving forward. Armstrong, you guys know, I, I, I'm, I've been biased towards Armstrong since he got here, or at least shortly after he got here, and we got to see him in person. Uh, and uh, it was good to see him come back strong from his hamstring this week. He had a really good week of practice, I, I thought. Um, I do think, I do feel like, I'll say this, if there's a if there's a coordinator who can put these receivers in in a better place to succeed, it's obviously going to be Bobby Petrino, light years ahead of Danny Enos in that category. The offense is more explosive. There's there's more. I think they do want to push the ball downfield more, and that was something I like. I told you guys, yeah, yesterday that I heard Petrino getting onto the quarterbacks about not pushing not push the ball down on the go route, which again, the go route, any, you know, anyone will tell you that played offense or played wide receiver. It's just where you're basically sprinting downfield. You know, you're, you're going full speed down to the, you're going to the end zone. And so Bobby wanted, uh, wanted again, I think it was Criswell. It could have been Malachi. I think it was Malachi. He was getting on to him for not hitting Isaiah Centennial on the go route. Instead, he was throwing to the check downs. We saw a little bit of that today. We saw, but it looked like a lot of it was, but by design, you know, they, there was there were a couple of times, especially with Malachi and Jacoby, and maybe even um, Jackson, where they're just throwing they're just throwing the ball to the running backs. Running backs are going to be heavily involved. I think that's fairly that's that's obvious that at this point they're going to the, the, the running backs are going to be involved in the passing game. Uh, so it's going to be it's going to be interesting to see how that goes. We know the infamous wheel route, you know the the Wingo wheel route against Alabama, like that's kind of always been a part of Petrino's thing, like getting the running backs more involved uh, and not just pass blocking, right? Getting them involved in the passing game. UCF is juggling them balls. That's right. (laughs) Uh, For the ones watching the spring game on SEC Network Plus, we missed the 75-yard touchdown by C.J. Brown. Commercials are ruining spring games now, Ty. Dadgummin. I'm sorry, Big Brad. By the way, shout out to everybody. I, so many people stopped me today, uh, which is crazy because I expect that during like for a football game. If I'm at the stadium for like a game, I you know there's at one point it was like every 20 feet someone stopping me and talking to me. I apologize to anybody again. I always I always want to say this. I'm not. Sometimes I'm just in a hurry. I'm doing stuff. I typically just like the uh, coach Cal announcement. I was out the door like 
before they were even off the stage. I'm out. Like when it's events, I'm usually heading to the exits so I can get home, get my notes prepared, get everything ready to go. And that I did that today too. I think the I, I started off up up high, out of the sun, in the shade, so I could see my phone, so I could keep up with stats. Um, Bill Clinton, uh, Bill Clinton's what's his name in our Discord? Bill Clinton's favorite secretary, whatever. Uh, I forget his name. I'm sorry. I'm 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 exhausted. If you can't tell, my eyes feel like they're bloodshot. I could literally go to sleep right now. Um, he sat up there and talked with me a little bit. Uh, I had a couple other guys from the Discord. Shout out to MJ five hundred one. Uh, I mean, it was it was awesome. It was really cool to get to meet everybody. But then eventually, they they the Woo Pig, uh, some of the crowd from the Woo Pig crowd brought me down, or asked me to come sit with them. So I did, and that was right around the second half. So I didn't keep up with as many of the stats, but I have the total stats here in front of me. But uh, yeah, it was crazy, man. It was it was cool to hang out with the Woo Pig guys. Got to meet them finally in person. Wild. It was, it was wild, bro. I mean, it was it was a lot of fun. I I had a lot of fun with them. It was really cool. Uh, Russell's a monster. Yeah. Bill Clinton's favorite intern. I knew that. I'm, I'm not kidding. I am. I could just fall over and go to sleep. Of course I parked half a mile away from the stadium too. And, and, and I'm going uphill, you know, I'm going up Razorback road. Hope you got anyone who went, hope you had a good time. I certainly did. All right. So looking at some of these numbers, uh, so let, let's just go over kind of some of the, the passing numbers here or the offensive numbers. Looking at Taylor Green, we'll work our way up. KJ Jackson, who I missed like a few of his throws in the second half. I think the numbers are 15 of 22 for 110 yards, if that sounds right. Did not throw a touchdown, but he did throw a pick. And that ball, it looked wobbly. It looked from our angle, the guys that were sitting around me, it looked like someone had made contact with the ball at the line of scrimmage. And uh, and it was picked off. It was a Akari Johnson who I believe got credit for the pick. True freshman, by the way. So KJ Jackson, not a great day, you know, but not a bad day. He uh, 107 or 100. So I have him at a 107 to 115 is what I have noted. So somewhere in there is where he ended up in the passing yards. Malachi, I have it. Uh, I have Malachi at three of eight for 22 yards, no touchdowns, no picks. Jacoby Criswell, I have it three of six for 84 yards with a touchdown. And Taylor Green, in the first half, remember, he didn't play in the second half. He didn't play. And they would not let the quarterbacks really run loose because, of course, they're not going to. 17-22, to 22, 243, three passing touchdowns. I'm not kidding when I say this. Remember, that's a constantly running clock, okay? It's a constant running clock. This dude could have had, had they not blown the whistle on some of those runs, I firmly believe if they had tackled it or tried to tackle him to the ground, he's still north of 300-plus yards of total offense in the first half alone with a running clock. His explosiveness is there. Yes, it's a spring game. Yes, it was against the twos. I hear you. I've got something to say about the twos as well. Um, but Talon showed you... He's he he's he's got a pretty nice little touch on the ball. I love that he was trying. It looked to me like he was going through his reads. Now I, you guys had the best seat in the house if you were at home. If you got to watch that at home, you guys could speak to that better than I could. But it looked to me like he was doing a pretty good job of moving his eyes, looking going through his reads and trying to move out of the pocket and veering him either left or right, and uh, him making some some spectacular throws. He has it in him to be a really good really good typical Bobby Petrino quarterback. Uh, like Bobby said about Lamar Jackson, sometimes you don't know what you have until it's a live game scenario until the quarterback. Now there's, there's, um, you know, there's, you're going to, you're going to pay for a mistake, right? When, when you're, when, when it's a live ball, you get the snap, you're going through your reads, it's different knowing, okay, now I could get hit. Now someone could hurt me. Someone could uh I don't know, mess me up. I gotta make the I gotta go through my reads a little quicker. I could, you know, I'm gonna make a mistake. And and he's fairly confident. I told you guys all spring camp. He's a fairly confident thrower. Um, didn't throw a ton of picks through camp, but he did struggle a little bit with accuracy. His his passing percentages through camp. 
I'm not talking about today, through camp from, from what numbers I have and what I've heard other people say that were there at camp. He struggled a lot. Today, he looked so much more refined. I like the potential that is there. But it's a different scenario, man, when, when, you're, uh, when you're running for your life. Right when you know you've got when you've got a um, you've got a six foot five two hundred and eighty pound all SEC defensive end coming for your life, or or coming to mess you up, it's just different. This is different. When in this you you know you're not going to get hit. If someone hits you, that player is going to be in deep shit. So he knows. Taylor Green again. I think he would have had over three hundred yards easily, even full speed, full tackles, all that stuff. If they're bringing him, if they're going to bring him to the ground, I still think he ends up with over three hundred yards of offense. Jaquinta Jackson is him. That dude had, I have him down for 72 yards off just nine carries. I don't know if that carry amount is correct or not. Someone please feel free to double check that. Two touchdowns. He is, I, I said, someone asked me, or maybe it was last night at uh, walk-ons. Someone asked me if we had a thousand yard back, and I said, I don't know who it is, but they will. someone's going to have a thousand yards. And someone else made a really good point today that I was sitting next to at the at the scrimmage. He said, um, "We're going to be a running back by committee." It's exactly right. It's it's going to be running back by committee. Rashad Dominion looked really good. He had almost well. I do have him at forty one yards off of uh, off three carries, and then Augusta I have at seven yard or seven carries for eight yards. Augusta did not have a really strong day. Dominic Johnson two for eight. Braylon Russell, I have five for 40 and a touchdown, by the way. Very nice touchdown by him. Taylor Green, they only give him credit for 15 yards. You and I both know that dude would have taken off. Easily been north of, of probably, you know, 50, 60 yards rushing easily uh, and probably a rushing touchdown or two. I mean, he was he was a one-man show. I should say that, just in terms of what he could do, what he offered. Jacoby Criswell and Singleton. Uh, I don't have any of those guys for positive rushing yards. So, yeah. Um, for the ones, I already read that. Russell is a monster. He is, DC. You're not wrong. Uh, would you say the INTs were good coverage or poor decisions on throws? I only listened to Chuck. It was, again, from my angle, it was tough. You, Anyone who watched it at home will probably have a better take than me on that. I'll have to go back and rewatch. Um, the pick that I saw looked like it was, it was, there was contact made with the ball at the line of scrimmage. So, uh, Arky 56, the infamous Arky 56 says going to miss Cam Little. Yeah. Today was not, was not great for the kickers, even though they had a really good week. Kickers had a really good week. I, I was a little bit surprised at how, uh, yeesh, how yikes the kickers looked today. It was a little, a little bit concerning for sure. In the passing game, I have Am I have uh, Broden as the leading receiver at five catches for 55 yards and a touchdown. I've been telling y'all, man, Broden. And think about this. He was not at practice all week. Now, I guess he went through uh, walkthroughs yesterday, but he was not there on Thursday or, or uh, Tuesday. He was not present. So he's been out for a minute. And that's a big portion of spring camp that he missed. And then he steps in and he has over 50 yards off five grabs and a touchdown. I told you guys. And I, I didn't think he would show up today. I really didn't. I thought he had some other stuff going on. Uh, Pittman said it was some family stuff. Very impressed with Tyrone Broden. He, again, I thought out of all the receivers between him and C.J. Brown got targeted a lot. Good to see him. I think he had like eight targets. He caught five of them. I have him down for 105 yards and a touchdown. Andrew Armstrong, I already mentioned him. Three grabs for just uh, right at 55 yards and a touchdown. Uh, what was the other one? There's another really nice catch. Yeah, Jaquinda Jackson had a grab. Uh, I don't know if that was – I didn't see where he was at down on the field. I thought it was 20 yards. It may not have been, but he had a touchdown. Again, the running backs are going to be involved in the passing game. Uh, Varkey's Gums, despite being a favorite target, the tight ends really didn't – the tight ends weren't the stars of the show today, and I thought they might be. I thought we'd be talking a lot about Varky's Gums uh, or, or, or um, Luke Has, even though he did have over 50 yards off two grabs. I thought we'd be talking about these dudes tearing it up because of how often the receivers, or excuse me, the quarterbacks would throw to check downs. They would throw to their bailout calls going through their reads because they just no one else would be open downfield. So they didn't. And they actually tried to push the ball downfield a little bit today. That was really good to see. 
Overall, I mean, I'm I'm gonna give Broden. I think Broden deserves. I mean, if I were to hand out the chain, it would go to Green. Don't get me wrong; the gold chain would go to Green today. I think for the offense, for sure. Um, but it, man, Broden is him, man, and and Andrew Armstrong again. He's still like he's just coming back from that hamstring. Uh, Isaiah, where did Centennial? What do I have him down for? I have him at, and I don't think this is right. I have him for two for twenty five. I think I'm missing a play, but uh, two two for twenty five is what I have. I think he was actually at three, three grabs. Uh, let's let's see here, Ty. We're sweeping Bama. Oh, Josh. Yeah, the game is going to start any minute, so I do appreciate you guys. I'm trying to hurry this one along for you. Uh, De City, love your channel. Hey, I appreciate you, man. Thank you so much for stopping by. I appreciate you. I'm late, but we made it. What's up, Ty? What's going on, Boss Hog? I love it too when you guys when when you do see me out in public and you just tell me your real name. I'm like, I don't know who that, who are you? And then you give me your, either your YouTube name or your discord name. And I'm like, oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Broden, uh, lost a lifetime friend. Yeah. He, unfortunately. He, okay. So it was a friend that passed away, not a family member. That sucks, man. That's never easy. Lost my, uh, real good friend of mine at the age of 15. Carl Wayne Barr, really good friend of mine died of spinal meningitis at 15 years of age. It's rough, man grew up across the street from me used to beat me with a bat but it was out of love I don't know uh, I don't care if it was against the twos it was so nice to see a competent passing game and guys knowing their jobs we got you on the TV in the Woo Pig pod hey what's up big man Ross yeah there's big man Ross what's up fellas Tonka Todd what's going on hey Ty my name is Mike by the way yeah thank you uh, all right. What else do we have here for, for, uh, duh, 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 duh. so we have some defensive numbers here as well. Now I said yesterday, I sit here, I sit here and told you guys linebackers was, you know, it's a, it's a bit of a concern and yet, and yet Brad Spence had himself a ball game. I don't know if word got to him that folks were talking some noise, but Brad Spence, I have down. For three TFLs, one sack, two QB hurries, and five tackles. That man had a day. And it's really nice to see. He was blowing it up. Very nice. From where I was sitting, I, I you know, I could see a little bit, you know, and I was trying to pull the game up on my phone. Really impressive day for him. This has got to be a confidence builder for a guy like that. I think Brad, he's someone who, as soon as he committed and signed with Arkansas, I thought this is a guy we're going to have to keep an eye on. Uh, I hope this all translates onto the field in 2024, but, you know, you never really know. Really quick, we got an update on the transfer portal. Sam Pittman said if they if they don't lose anybody into the portal, and you guys, Patreon members should know this for sure, five scholarships is what they have available. Um if they if they just go in with the five, they're, they're looking for help, and this shouldn't shock anybody. Defensive line, offensive line. Then he said maybe another wide receiver. He did mention they might be looking for an older linebacker if they if they lose anybody else. I'm just gonna be straight up with you. I'm gonna be surprised if they don't lose if they don't lose a uh, few people. I'm I'm gonna be surprised if they don't at least a few. Okay, maybe three to four players. I've heard names. I've had names thrown at me, and I, some of them don't really shock me. Although, a couple of those names I'd heard balled out today, so maybe maybe something changes. You'd be surprised what a day like today can do for a, for a young man and, and what's on his mind. These kids got to do what's best for them or what they feel like is best for them. Uh, you know, I, I've never been shy about my support for NIL. I think these kids should be in on the game. Absolutely. How can you be? How can you be a – a fan of football and not want the best for these kids, especially when they're doing what they do for the state, for the university. And I know a lot of people are going to throw out, well, they're doing it for their own greed. No, man, you can't, you wouldn't do any different if you were their age and don't act like you wouldn't. All right. Uh, so I'm all for it, but we know tampering is a thing. Coaches have complained about it. Let's hope that's not happening. I don't want them to lose anyone. If you had me to guess anyone again, this is not something I've heard. Uh, Jacoby Criswell, I, I'd be sh I'd be shocked, and I know Sam said today to the media that there's still a battle at QB two, and maybe there is. I don't feel like there is. To me, Malachi is QB two. 
I think he's earned it. I thought all through spring camp, he he just gets it. I think he's he's just I don't know. I, the only disadvantage I don't know. He's not six. He's six one. All right, and he's a short six one. I've walked right by that dude, and when he's got full pads on, he's he's six one. Might even be six feet tall. That might be the only diss on him. And it's not like Jacoby Criswell is six six either, right? Uh, neither one of them are are, are KJ Jackson or, or Green. But I I would be shocked. And again, this is. And I mean, no disrespect to Jacoby. I, I think he, in the right system, that dude could be a baller, and, and I'd be just surprised. I would be surprised if he was still on, on the roster this fall. Uh, listen, I, I've – you never know. I mean, again, Sam says there's a battle there, so maybe – maybe there really is. And uh, Criswell – maybe Criswell can fight his way up to the two spot. Uh, you know, if, if you listen to what Petrino said not long ago – Sound like Criswell was struggling with some stuff. Maybe he'll make. Maybe he's made some adjustments since uh, we last talked to Petrino. So I don't. I don't know about you know. I, was I a little bit? The wide receiver part kind of threw me off. Uh, why are you? I mean, I feel like your wide receiver room. Could you do better? I, I'm maybe. Yeah, I think. Yeah, of course you could. Right, I mean, and, and again, I don't mean that as disrespect to any of the guys there now. I'm just simply saying that you could always add another body, you know, that could really, really have a big part of this offense and and help move it forward. And we've seen what they can do even after spring, after that can or uh, after that portal opens up post spring. We've seen them go get some dudes. Maybe they can go grab someone that can help out the wide receivers. I, I have a hard time seeing them grab someone better than an Armstrong. Broad nor Centennia. So maybe they're looking for that fourth guy. Maybe they feel like there's a gap between those three and then the rest of the field. Uh, and, of course, you Dasman uh, broke his wrist today, so maybe that's going into his line of thinking as well. But uh kind of seems to me like that was part of the plan. I, I would say why not go after a couple more linebackers, but it was good to hear him talking about the offensive line, the defensive line, and, and uh, at least – it's on their mind about getting an older linebacker, a mature linebacker. I said they need to go out and get two and and not, if you can, if you can get old, I don't know, get the the hunt family. Maybe you can talk Tyson into, into helping out with the NIL to go grab a, a, an older experienced veteran who's been around the sec and who could really come in and play a big part of the, of the defense. It could push the ones, not the twos, could push the ones for playing time. Maybe we're having a different conversation. I don't know. But going back to Brad Spence, though, gives you hope about you know what you saw out of him today. Gives you a lot of hope. I thought he had a hell of a day. He was, he was fantastic. Uh, TJ Metcalf had a really good day. No surprise there. You guys know I'm also – I like TJ Metcalf and Tevin, both those dudes. Uh, TJ, five tackles. Um, Jayheim Singletary got, got kind of beat up today. He, he, uh, he got burned a couple of times. I kind of thought, I, I'm pretty sure it was, I know he did once kind of got beat off the, the snap, but he did get credit. Someone had texted me and said, so-and-so gave him credit for two PBUs, two pass breakups. Uh, Miguel Mitchell, I have down as a pass breakup. Landon Jackson got heavily involved. Landon Jackson had a tackle for loss and a pass breakup. I think he must have been one of the uh, – because they had a couple balls get knocked down at the line of scrimmage. So, uh, I'm trying to look here at my rest of my notes. Where's Where, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Let's – hold on here. Pittman, Pittman had made a comment about – Okay, well, that's never mind. Never mind. That's wrong. I'll delete that. So yeah, I, overall, I mean, it's pretty clear where they're at with QB one. I think I think Malachi is clearly QB two, and then uh, KJ Jackson's going to be QB three. And I, I again, I'd be shocked if if Criswell's back. Running backs, it's it's it certainly looks like we know who's going to be the guy. Jaquindon. <laughs> 70 yards off of uh, what I say. Was it nine? I don't know where that note went. It was nine or ten carries. Very good average for him. Rashard DeBinion had a lot of yards on just a few carries. And Augusta got involved a little bit today. He had, uh, I think he ended up with the second most carries of the running backs. Didn't exactly produce great. But uh, Braylon Russell with, with over 40 yards on just five carries and a touchdown. Not bad. C.J. Brown, he caught the 75-yarder from Singleton. 
and that's what put him over the 100-yard mark off, off the uh, receiving yards. 109 yards, 100, 109 to 112 yards with that touchdown. And again, you could probably say the same thing about the other quarterbacks that you can with Green, especially with Malachi. They probably would have had some more rushing yards if they had if they had intended on intended on running more often. Uh, it, they threw the ball a lot today. I mean, I think we can all agree that I mean they ended up with uh, quite a few pass attempts. I was a little bit surprised they didn't try to run the ball more because my God, we saw them run, run, run through uh, spring camp. A lot of running kind of reminded me a little bit of Enos who put an emphasis on running the football last spring. Uh, but so it's not, and they did this spring as well with maybe a touch more passing, but in the scrimmage, it was a, a lot more uh, trying to push the ball downfield, trying to find some explosiveness on offense. Um, yeah, I have Akari Johnson who picked off KJ Jackson. It was on a third and long scenario. And that's a true freshman right there. see and yeah we didn't see tight ends get super involved that's probably the thing I'm a little bit surprised and and I mean they did have some short yardage throws but man it really felt like these these guys especially green a little bit more confident trying to push the ball downfield for sure hey we got another super chat I see you hog wild thank you man appreciate that KJ Jefferson had the arm strength but he didn't have the accuracy to make some of the passes green made today I, you know, it's hard. It's always hard to compare. We don't have a large enough sample size with Green. I mean, you could make the argument that, that actually K.J. Jefferson's numbers were better than um, than Green's last year at Boise State. Remember, his, his passing completion numbers were not great. But when you talk about just the touch on the ball, man, that ball placement to Andrew Armstrong, that I mean, he that was a dime. It was gorgeous. Now, we can't sit here and act like we never saw KJ do that. Remember, a couple of years ago, he had one of the highest 20-plus yard uh, numbers, tw uh, completion percentages among all quarterbacks in the SEC. And if I remember right, he finished like top 12 in the country. And uh, maybe that was a PFF stat I saw. But on passes beyond 20 yards. So let's not sit here and act like KJ couldn't make those throws in Kendall Browse's offense. Again... I know we're going to do the thing where we compare a lot. When we compare KJ uh, KJ Jefferson and Taylor Green, we're going to do that a lot. But KJ Jefferson still had the two previous years that were dynamite. You know, yeah, one year with Burks, one year without. Look at the numbers; they're not drastically different. He didn't fall off a ton. You know, that was a lot on the defense why they didn't have a more successful season. And yeah, the offense still had its issues, but it was still Kendall Bryles, KJ Jefferson offense, right? That veer and shoot. He still put up some numbers, but last year he regressed, and I agree with that. If you're going to talk about comparing his throws and what he was doing last year to what we've seen so far to Taylor Green in spring camp, yeah, I would argue that Taylor Green looks like he's got a strong, strong foot ahead of KJ, but we haven't seen Green in, a, in an SEC setting yet. That's the thing we're not talking about. We've not seen him go up against former big-time four- and five-star athletes. You know, you're going to play some of those this year. You're going to play against some of the best that the SEC has to offer. He's never had to do that before. So we got to be careful. Let's not, uh, let's not put the cart before the horse. Let's see how this all pans out. But I will say he was pretty impressive today, man. He made some really nice throws. The offense just hummed. I know once again it was against the twos. I get it. All right? He was juggling balls. It was great. KJ Jackson had a had a good game. He's a freshman uh, who should be getting ready for his prom. Uh, yeah, uh, he's going to be special. I liked what I saw out of him, and it's good to have a lefty quarterback like that. You know, kind of takes away the whole blind side effect. Uh, you know, some really good defenses can just switch their ends around, but uh, he's talented, dude. KJ love his size. He can make the throws. He's not afraid to veer out of the pocket and make some things happen. He operates well, I think, out of the RPO. Uh, he completed a couple of nice passes, I believe, out of play action today. If you guys noticed, they didn't run, run any like strong eye formation. I saw them do that last week in practice. They actually had a tight end lined up at fullback and a running back to dot the eye. And it, it wasn't offset. I was just straight up eye formation, tight end, you know, the whole, the whole like Brett Bielema type of offense. They did that a couple of times this last week, or maybe it was, it feels like it was more than once, but uh, they didn't do that. They ran a lot of pistol, 
I think they ran some empty sets. Saw them uh, saw them run the pistol with four wide receivers. That's like one of my it's like one of my favorite things to watch. One of my favorite things to play on NCAA fourteen. I like running that pistol offense with four wideouts. Um, they they kind of mixed it up a little bit. Defense mixed it up as well. Offensive line we haven't talked enough about. Now I was pretty impressed with the with uh, with the ones. I thought again. I want to go back and rewatch. If you guys watched it at home, you had a better angle than I did. No matter where I was sitting at in the stadium today, which is two different places, but I thought the, the starting offensive line looked pretty good. I think there were maybe two total sacks today. The ones may have given up one. And I feel like the twos gave up one. Uh, and again, it could be wrong. So I'm, I'm definitely going to try and rewatch that. Uh, <laughs> kickers are super trash. <laughs> I don't have that sound. I don't have the super trash. I don't have it. I'll just do it. Super trash. Yeah, kickers were not. You're not wrong. Kickers were sus, bro. It was uh, a lot there that, that uh, let, uh, left a lot to be desired for sure. I, I was, again, surprised because the kickers had such a strong week in camp. A little bit surprised by that. Um, Aaron Bell, what's up, man? How you doing? Uh, Pit out pimping them. <laughs> Uh, I gotta, I gotta quote some more, uh, coach Cal. I gotta find some more coach Cal quotes. I need to watch that hogs plus episode. I will say this about the twos. Um, and I have that list of who lined up with the twos. I gotta find it. I am, uh, really concerned. Was not real thrilled. Uh, uh Jukaj today. I saw him someone again, guy sitting next to me kind of muffled. Uh, come on, go, go sit down by your players. If anyone was at the game, where did you see number four? He was away from the team. He was off kind of on his own. Uh, I think he he's capable. I think he's a very he's he's a promising pass rush guy. He's just a bull rusher and he could do it. But overall, I thought the second team defense. You could argue that it was just that Green was so well dialed in, and that's what we always do, and that's where the argument, right? That's one of the pillars of of, of a scrimmage. That's one of the pillars of conversation. Like, okay, he lo- was it that the ones are just that much further ahead? than of, of course they are than the twos, right? I think there is such a fall off in some positions or some areas in the defense, and on uh, second-team defense, I was not very impressed. I'll have to go back and rewatch and relook at some of these numbers, but I, I just thought the twos, especially up front, on the off on the defensive line, I uh, did not look very good. I just was not very impressed. I didn't see them get a whole lot of push. I didn't see a whole lot of pressure on Green. Uh, and it's not like Green took a ton of snaps in that first half. I mean, you know, Sanford was a Sanford. Look, he had some moments. I thought uh, uh, Snacks Johnson had some moments. Uh, Metcalf, I tried to keep an eye on as well. I think they had him lined up at the nickel. Uh, Singletary got beat, you know, Jaden Allen. I think he, uh, I think he ended up with a PBU, but I, you know, outside of maybe Akari Johnson, who really had that interception handed to him, I just wasn't real impressed. They always seem to be out of place. The ones just looked so much further ahead of the, of the twos on defense. And again, that is to be expected. I just didn't expect the drop off to be that much overall and it may not just be an individual talent thing again there's a thing that we don't always talk about with football that we always talk about with basketball chemistry okay again any of you who've played football you know your defensive line got to be on the same page hell your offensive line you've got guys calling things out calling out who the who the you know what this guy's doing in front of you and calling out your block or whatever you know there's signals and things that you got to pay attention to and there is such a thing as chemistry when a linebacker is getting the uh, call from the sidelines and he's making the call to the rest of the team they've all got to be on the same page it could have been that I don't know that it's a big talent drop off or not Carson Dean who ran with the twos he had a couple of good plays he made a he made a really hard hit but overall I just thought the second team defense just I don't know I I just wasn't very impressed they just got I mean the the ones just went up and down the field again that's not surprising that's not shocking I just expected the twos to put up a little bit more of a fight um there was another. There was there was a tight end who made a really nice play. It was I think it was Maddox Lassiter who did end up making a really nice catch. Showed off a little bit of athleticism. Was it him or was it the other one? 
No, 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 no. I, okay, I don't know. I don't have the note. But another tight end did end up making a really good play. You had on the uh, second team offensive line, they had a Marion Harris, Josh Street. So a Marion Harris at left tackle, Josh Street at left guard with Brooks Edmondson behind him. Amari Wiggins, who I thought no matter what they did in the portal, I thought was going to be a starter. They, they had him running with the twos. It's not really a big shock considering they have uh, – Addison Nichols has done a really good job playing that center spot. So, and then they had uh, Kobe Branham at right guard and Tykes Crawford, who's fought for the for the ones. I think they, I thought they had him mixed up there with him and Blackstock with those two competing for that one spot. But I think Blackstock may have it locked down. So, yeah. All right. Uh, what else? I don't know if we're going to do a poll or not. I, I think it's too late in the show. I know the baseball game's on and, and I'm itching to watch it. And I know you guys probably, some of you might be too. G. Holmes, a.k.a. Big Sassy. It was Big Sassy. What's going on, bro? What's up? Yeah, it was fun, man. I had fun with the Woo Pig, with the Woo Pig guys last night. I had a lot of fun meeting viewers. Um, I had a blast. It really was a lot of fun. Didn't get home till midnight. <laughs> I'm paying that price tonight. I've got like a whole – my wife left. <laughs> uh, I'm, tr- I'm going to try not to tag her in Discord she left me a whole bunch of stuff from my studio room that I haven't cleaned up. It's just laying here. She's like, yeah, you're going to get this cleaned up today. I haven't been home. I've been out. You know, it's It's been a crazy 24 or so hours. So I've been invited to like, I was invited to a house party tonight. Another friend of mine that I've known forever uh, had a thing going on tonight. Him and some, some of our old friends from Jefferson Elementary here in Fayetteville. We're going to do a thing tonight. Woo pig guys are, they're, uh, hanging out. I got an offer to go hang out with them tonight. I'm probably going to have to decline tonight. I do appreciate it. Another friend of mine, there's a housewarming party or something going on. I'm going to have to decline all that. I'm tired. I got apparently this whole mess to clean up and uh, I'm just going to relax. I'm going to take the evening off, watch some baseball and just relax. Maybe later on tonight if I'm in the mood, maybe I'll go hang out with somebody. Probably not though. I'm, I'm, I'm tired. Yeah, I mean, I would pull the camera around and show you. She just basically dumped this stuff here. <laughs> to clean. I've been. It's work, man. I, 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 you know, what are you gonna do? Camo says it sounds like the kicker's confidence already shot. I think we got a little ways to go before we get there. Before we start, let's let's see what they do. Right? Let's maybe this was just one bad day for them because again, they had a really strong week. Uh, transplanted Texan. God bless you. Uh, hey, Ty, kicking game scares me. <laughs> yeah, everyone talking about that. That is certainly the biggest negative of the day, and I, I have to agree. The kicking game was sus today. Can't put too much into this. It was against second stringers, and they still managed to make the starting O-line look sloppy and allow pressure. There was some pressure, J.D., and again, I'm not putting too much into it as I've repeated over and over to not take too much away from a single spring game. They did give up some pressures, but overall, I thought the starting offensive line did a, did a pretty good job. I'm not saying they did great. I think they did sack Green once, and I think they would have been accredited with at least two other TFLs had they let the play uh, play out. But overall, all things considered, I thought the twos just they didn't really look the part. They look like they're very, very far behind the ones. And let's hope they get that fixed. You know, over summer camp, they're 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 – you know what what they got to do throughout the summer and hopefully they can get it fixed. They still got all fall camp. We got a long ways to go, right? So now it's just all about it's about basketball recruiting. It's about football. Guys, five scholarships and we're going to keep an eye on if anybody leaves. Again, if you're a Patreon supporter, you're going to want to be in that Discord cuz uh, it's going to be a crazy week. Also basketball with the portal. It's it's going to be nuts. So make sure you've signed up for Patreon if you haven't already. We are over 100 members on Patreon. You guys are rock stars. I love it. You guys are awesome. I appreciate each and every one of you. I had someone tell me last night they were apologizing that they couldn't, they had to discontinue their membership because finances got tied up or something. I told them not to apologize. I appreciate anybody who's ever given the four bucks or more. It really means a lot to me. It really does. That's awesome. And the fact that we're over a hundred members, I know some of those are free members as well, but it's still crazy. It's awesome, and I and I do appreciate you guys for doing that and for signing up. There's Discord if you want to get involved. Uh, Discord's fun. If you're a Patreon member, Discord is really fun, so you're going to want to sign up for that. We are doing another giveaway. I got the names posted as well. Again, uh, Harlan Richter, Michael Conley, MJ501, who I just talked to last night. 
He's got the Steve Little card, and John Goodman got the Traylon Burks card. I'm gonna I'm gonna get those mailed out to you guys this week. Okay, enjoy the baseball game. I'm gonna clean up the garage, the studio slash garage, and I'm gonna watch some baseball. So I appreciate you guys. I don't know when I'll be live next. I'm sure there will be something to react to, and I'll be here for it. So I appreciate you, and uh, yeah, until until next time, I'll see you guys. Appreciate you. Like, share, subscribe on your way out.